welcome back to the Valheim Mod Spotlight. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a mod that allows you to relive your childhood memories as a boy scout or brownie. Gypsy Vikings, a mod by Magikarp Sushi, solves the problem that you'll face when exploring and traversing long distances. It's very easy to get caught unawares whilst out in the black forest, swamp or plains, leaving yourself exposed and potentially even getting yourself killed. The worst part of all of this is making your way back to where you've died after you've respawned. If, for example, you've travelled a long distance to the swamp to mine for scrap iron, the last thing you want to do is die and lose all of your gear. You can negate this somewhat by building an outpost nearby, however this is time consuming and isn't something you're likely going to want to keep doing. This is where Gypsy Vikings comes into play. Whilst you're out exploring or gathering supplies, the mod allows you to craft three new structures as a temporary form of shelter. These shelters are the campsite, a small pop-up solution that can be easily assembled and disassembled. The campsite features a tent for sleeping and a large storage unit that can be accessed from the front and the rear of the tent. The small tent, similar to the campsite but without the storage, and the large tent. Bearing a similar appearance to a Mongol yurt, the large tent is a pre-made shelter that's suitable for housing multiple players, as well as one or two crafting stations. At the time of making this video, there are a few key points that need addressing. Firstly, the mod will soon require the new mod API Jotun JVL instead of the outdated Jotun Lib that the mod currently uses. Secondly, it's essential that you use campsites whilst travelling and only place them on natural terrain. You can clear any shrubs, bushes and rocks that may be in the way, but it's important that you do not modify the terrain at all. Gypsy Viking structures automatically build up and flatten the terrain that they're placed on, however these calculations are made from the default terrain's unedited state, meaning any alterations that you've made could be multiplied, causing random spikes in height, like this. To overcome this issue, make sure when placing any of the three tents that it's on natural, unmodified terrain. This will result in the terrain being raised and flattened as expected. Although this could be seen as a potential problem, the fact that removing the tent that you've placed automatically undoes the raising and flattening, returning the terrain to its previous state, is a nice touch. So how do we craft these tents? Well, none of the tents require a workbench to place whilst in build mode, so you only need to make sure that you're carrying the required materials for which one you want to build. The pop-up campsite requires you to use a workbench to create the camping kit item first. This requires 12 deer pelts, 18 wood and 15 leather scraps. Once crafted, you'll find the camping kit in your inventory. You need to make sure that you keep this on you whilst travelling, as this is how we build the campsite. Once you've found the perfect spot, preferably somewhere out the way of enemies, like a small island just off the coast, simply equip your hammer, select the campsite from the mist tab and place the structure. The terrain will deform and the structure will be placed. The process is similar for the other two tents, each requiring their own resources to place. Again, you don't need to be in the vicinity of a workbench in order to build these, you simply need to have the required resources on hand. The campsite and small tent feature their own shelter bus and sleeping mechanics, meaning you don't need to be dry or have to build a fireplace or bed to use them. Simply place down each structure from the MISC tab and press E to set your spawn point, then E again to sleep. The large tent however requires you to fill it with the furniture and crafting stations you desire. Whilst the tent does provide shelter, you'll also need to craft your own bed and fireplace to be able to sleep. The tent roof will trap smoke which can potentially lead to suffocation, so my recommendation would be to place the bed in the middle of the tent and the campfire just outside, just to be on the safe side. So, the tents are great for protecting you from the elements and the dangers of night time, but how does it stack up against monsters? Well at the time of making this video, I put each of these three structures through a scientifically controlled viking style environment test. That's to say, I beat them with an iron mace repeatedly until they broke. The campsite is the strongest of the three, averaging around 35 hits. The large tent was in second place, averaging around 25 hits until it was destroyed. And finally, the small tent averaged around 10 hits with the mace until it broke apart. So out of the three, the campsite is definitely the tent to use, so don't forget your camping kit. Overall, I think the mod is a genuinely helpful and lore friendly addition to the game. The crafting recipes are fair, and the fact that the player doesn't have to be dry or have a campfire nearby means that the tents really are a quick and simple solution, just as they should be. 
Magikarp Sushi's mod means you're no longer tied to your primary base, nor do you have to keep stopping and building fortified structures, allowing you to spend more time doing what you set out to do, such as exploring and gathering resources. If you have any questions about Gypsy Vikings, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave a like. And for more videos on the latest and most creative Valheim mods, make sure to subscribe.